Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here. Came all the way from Seattle, Washington. It's gorgeous. And actually, my uh, ancestors Swiss, so we immigrated from Switzerland. Okay, uh, do you have an audio? Uh, this is Sam Brown, a ben soldier. Have to endure rounds of surgery, skin grafts, and painful skin stretching. This is a battle that's going to take years to to get back to being how it was prior to this. But while Brown's body fights that battle. Virtual reality technology lets his brain enjoy hurling snowballs to the music of Paul Simon. University of Washington researchers Hunter Hoffman and David Patterson designed the virtual reality game Snow World to occupy burn patients' minds during painful wound cleaning or physical therapy. Snow World's the opposite of of fire, snowy, cold. It's supposed to cancel out and help distract them from remembering their original injury. And Nathan touched the pot and himself. Six-year-old Nathan Neisinger has endured skin grafts, months of wound care, and more pain than safe doses of narcotics can kill. It can ease their pain, but their mind's still directed to they're going to go into the tank room, they're going to get scrubbed down. Then there's physical therapy to stretch his scarred skin. But through it all, Nathan's brain can go off to play in a 3D computer-generated world called Snow World. What we're really trying to do is just to pull his attention away from what's happening in the therapy, to put his attention in the virtual world, and, and by virtue of that, have him experience less pain. The University of Washington psychologists Hunter Hoffman and David Patterson created Snow World for treating burn victims. Their clinical studies with patients like Nathan are showing how effective virtual reality is at fighting the fire of burn pain. Patients who went into virtual reality reported having large reductions in how much pain they were experiencing, typically 40 to 50 percent reduction on average. In an article in Scientific American, Hoffman described how a special virtual reality helmet that would work in an MRI scanner confirmed this. The brain scan showed far fewer pain signals with virtual reality than without it. So I didn't feel anything really, but I did feel some pain, but not that much. Anything to get his mind off seeing the nurses with their, you know, equipment trying to work on him helped a lot. The researchers hope virtual reality will soon be available to help many more patients escape their pain. I'm Oren Schoenfeld. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any questions? <laughs> no, just kidding. So, uh, so we're, this is an interdisciplinary project. Uh, collaboration between the Human Interface Technology Lab, which I understand is uh, expanding to other countries. Um, uh, so well, I'm at the University of Washington and in Seattle. This is uh, some of my colleagues, Dave Patterson and I co-originated the technique of using immersive virtual reality for pain distraction. Uh, so most of the time when the burn patients are laying in their beds, pain is well controlled with uh, pain medications as long as they, the patients don't move. But during wound care, most patients report severe to excruciating pain despite receiving uh, moderate to large doses of strong pain medications. Thank you. Uh, pain has a strong psychological component. So the same incoming signal from your uh, pain receptor can be interpreted as more painful or less painful depending on a number of psychological factors. Usually these factors are working against the patient, so if the patient becomes anxious, that can amplify their experience of pain. Uh, one of the problems we have with burn patients is unlike a lot of injuries, unlike a, a, a broken arm where you set the arm and then it, you don't have to do much with it for a few weeks, with the burn patients, they often have to get daily wound care, daily physical therapy, skin stretching exercises, and the pain medications become less effective with multiple treatments, often, as the patient habituates. Uh, so what you end up with is side effects, limiting how much you can increase the dose. You need to keep the dose higher, but you can't go higher. So they say, that's tough. You just have to get your wound care. And uh, you know, the wound care is crucial for the recovery of the patient. The skin is uh, exfoliating, and that dead skin has to be removed or it can become infected. And I'm, I'm not showing you any gory pictures, uh, 
Uh, but actually, that's interesting because the burn patients, one of the things we do is block their view of the wound care. So that redirects their attention into the computer generated world. We, we basically uh, kind of short circuit the, vis the sensory and we, we insert com computer generated imagery which as, since we're visually dominant, a huge amount of information is coming into the brain. Uh, we have interactivity. We've done a number of things to try to make it attention grabbing, but really the illusion of going in the computer generated world is very attention grabbing. The logic behind VR analgesia is that pain requires attention. So for example, if you knock somebody out with a, uh, a, a anesthesia, I was, get, I was having a hard time keeping those straight. Uh, you know, knock somebody out uh, so they're completely out. Supposedly they don't feel pain. And if they do feel pain, they give them these kind of uh, uh, amnesic drugs. So when they come out of their, they're like, can't remember. Even if they did have pain, they can't remember. So, but you don't have that luxury with the burn patients because you have to have treatment after treatment. So you can't, you, you can't knock them out day after day after day. So the patients are conscious during the wound care sessions. We're, uh, 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 okay, let's go to the next slide. We better, this is Snow World, we'll go again. Uh, the next slide, this is an image from Iraq. Uh, you just saw a video about this guy, I won't go into it too much, but this is Sam Brown. And I just wanna mention before I forget, there's a really happy ending with Sam Brown where he fell in love with his nurse and they got married and now they have two children. He's like really well adjusted and doing great in uh, his new job. So it's amazing uh, resilience. This is a soldier at Brooks Army Medical Center. Uh, uh, here's the data. So here's some really interesting data. The time spent thinking about pain is a new, something, a new measure I came up with. Uh, and how much fun are you having during wound care is a very controversial measure that the people in the people in the medical medicine were like, what? Don't ask people how much fun they're having during wound care. And one of the patients actually looked up at me and said, does this look like it's fun? I mean, what kind of an insensitive question is that? But then when we go into VR, we're actually getting people saying it was pretty fun. Wound care was pretty fun. Some of the uh, people, the doctors I work with say, no, they must be misunderstanding the question, you know. But I said, well, you know, they're telling us they're having fun. All right. Uh, here's a patient during uh, water-friendly VR. We had to develop a fiber optic image delivery system. That's now, of course, no longer needed with the new technology. Thank you. But go ahead. Uh, one more. So these, the, we'll just kind of go with these. I have several slides in a row here uh, where we're... Uh, uh, we had a sim stop there with that brain. So we had a fMRI. We made another one of those water friendly systems that's magnet friendly, fiber optic image delivery system with wide field of view. So we could have people go into virtual reality during fMRI brain scans. It took about two years to build the equipment and two weeks to run the study. So the, paint, the brain on the left shows uh, the brain really responds strongly to pain stimuli. These are healthy volunteers suffering for science. And uh, during virtual reality with the same pain stimuli, during the same brain scan, these patients' brains showed r dramatic reductions, significant reductions in all five regions of the brain. Next slide, please. And we've since replicated this. Uh, comparing VR analgesia to opioid analgesia, we showed VR worked as well as a moderate dose of hydromorphone, uh, and the two combined were better than either alone. Keep going. Uh, here's a patient. This is a little kid from Shriners Hospital, Shriners Hospitals for Children in Galveston, Texas. He's getting his uh, skin stretching exercises during virtual reality, and he. Uh, one interesting thing is he's a Spanish speaking, and when he was coming back into the room for a second physical therapy session, he said something in Spanish, and I said, what, what did he say? And they, they, they translated, watch out, penguins. So that's, uh, he, uh, you know, he, uh, instead of dreading, a lot of patients dread their wound care, 
Sam Brown, for example, reported that he would spend hours a day dreading when he was going to have to go in for his wound care. So uh, if we can have people thinking about something better. And w one of the things we've been able to show is it looks like VR analgesia continues to be effective with, when you use it day after day. Thanks. We'll try. And we're expanding into the tub room. This is a new this is, uh, this is a new water-friendly VR system we developed so we could treat patients when they're in the tub room. Uh, a couple more slides, and we're getting beautiful data with that study. Uh, significant results. Research are beginning to explore use of virtual reality for chronic pain. Uh, here's an interesting uh, you remember that brain from before that was all lit up. Having your brain lit up like that day after day, after day increases your um, risk of developing chronic pain and also your post-traumatic stress disorder. So next slide, please. What we're doing with VR is less pain, less pain, less pain, less pain, day after day after day. Could potentially have long-term benefits for the patient. That remains to be shown, but there's good theoretical reason. Next, please. And I was really impressed with the tour I got uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Very impressed. Uh, I think there's a lot of potential for the techniques that you're uh, developing in this uh, Switzerland for uh, trans, you know, using virtual reality to treat chronic pain. And I guess I'll just zip through these next slides. This is use of virtual reality for treating post-traumatic stress disorder for the World Trade Center. And here's a new mindfulness world that we use with a, border, with a borderline personality disorder patient. We showed dramatic reductions in um, uh, negative emotions. So that's another possible uh, way to go. Thank you very much.